Grandpa and I had been taking some much needed time off lately. 2024 had begun with a lot of excitement, and we had both needed about a week to recover from the skirmish at the botanical gardens. It had taken a little longer to get back to my usual pep, probably because all the energy I'd been throwing around. Grandpa had been trying to teach me how to harness these things for the past couple of years, but I suppose there was nothing like having your life in danger to show you what you could really do. I'd come home and slept for what Grandpa had reported anyway, about three days. He hadn't looked too worried when I finally got up, saying that was pretty normal for people my age. When you first realize your full potential, the first really big skirmish you have with something otherworldly, you really understand what it's like to have your life in danger. Fighting that hard will take it out of just about anyone. Anyway, the two of us have been sticking close to home. Me, because I was tired, and Grandpa, because his cough had come back. I had hated to hear that sickly railing cough return, and we had immediately put him on a breathing treatment like the doctor had advised. Grandpa hated them, saying it was nothing some hot tea and some rest couldn't help, but I didn't believe it. He had thrown around twice as much energy as I had, no mean feat for someone his age, and I knew that his body was about as wrecked as mine was. So, as we sat at the kitchen table one night, listening to the weather rage outside, I found myself in the mood for another one of his stories. Grandpa really hadn't been in the storytelling mood lately, the cough coming on him so suddenly, and I found that I missed sitting on the porch with a beer and listening to him tell me about the past. A little selfish, I know, but stories have always been such a big part of my relationship with Grandpa, and I was curious about something. Hey, have you ever had a battle like the one we had at the gardens with Nat? Grandpa scrunched his face up. I suppose I did. Nothing like fighting that winter spook, but we definitely had some times. I remember one particular incident where we had to go to put some restless spirits to rest, which was pretty wild. How did that go, I asked, leaning in as Grandpa smiled and stared off into the past. Somewhere between the exorcism at our neighbor's house and the bone collector, I suppose. It was definitely a time that I'll never forget. I'd gotten off of work when I saw Nat and thought I was about to get a scolding. I'd had a lesson with him that afternoon, but I had an emergency delivery that took me well till after dark to get done. He had a distant look when I saw him, and I sighed as I came to sit next to him. I know, Nat, I'm sorry. I had to make an emergency delivery, and I need you this weekend if you're done with your emergencies. I nodded, thinking it shouldn't be hard to get the weekend off. We didn't do a lot of deliveries on the weekend, and Wayne had looked guilty when he handed me the slip for the delivery today. He knew it was going to get me back home well past midnight, and he knew how little John's father liked people coming in late. If I told him I was taking a couple of days off, well, he probably wouldn't have minded much. Should be doable. Where are we going? I didn't think he was going to answer me at first, but he finally did, and I wished he hadn't. Somewhere I wish I wasn't. Somewhere I hoped I wouldn't have to go again. I pressed him for more, but he shook it off, saying he would be here at first light tomorrow to pick me up. Get some sleep, kid, because we got a long day ahead of us tomorrow. I tried my best, but any tiredness I might have had fled at the thought of what we might be doing tomorrow. What was he suggesting we do? Sounded like the house call my grandmother and I made sometimes, but I knew that it was likely to be something more dangerous. I knew that Nat was the spiritual leader for his tribe, but 
He was usually only dispatched to handle big problems. I drifted off thinking about that fact, picturing the two of us taking on a bone collector ten times bigger than the one that I had faced. I was roused much earlier than I had wanted to be, as John told me Uncle Nat was waiting downstairs for me. He told me to tell you that at this rate, the two of you won't reach the mound until next spring. He left me to get dressed, and half an hour later, we were on the road. Ned had gotten his hands on a familiar-looking farm all truck that I'd seen in the trucking yard more than once, and as we set out, I asked him where we were going. John mentioned a mound when he came to wake me up. Nat made a noise somewhere between a humph and a throat clearing. My nephew says too much sometimes. What do you know about the ancestral mounds? He asked, the truck crunching along on the dirt road. I know the ones in Georgia are usually protected by the government, if not the tribe. They're sacred sites, usually a place of mass burial, if not honored burial. Nat nodded. It's the same here. We bury our dead in sites of honor, but some of the mounds weren't made by us. What do you know about how the natives were treated by our old comrades? I assumed he meant the Russians, and I told him I knew very little. Well, it wasn't well. The Russians had an idea that we should integrate into their idea of society or be exterminated. Your country treats us a little better, but the bar was set pretty low to start with. The mound we're going to today is one such site. The Russians killed some 300 members of the tribe and buried them in a mass grave. The village didn't really have a name, our villages were more temporary in those days, and when they wouldn't fall under the occupation, the Russians killed them all to a man. The burial site holds men, women, children, animals, anything that resided in the village, and the graves changed the mind of a lot of natives in the area. I'm guessing that the spirits there are restless, I said. They weren't until someone disturbed them. Some of my people thought it was a good idea to exhume the bodies so they could bury them in a more honorable way. They wanted to lay the dead to rest with more dignity, but the dead didn't appreciate the sentiment. The site's been plagued with bad luck, accidents, and finally with the deaths of three workers. The community spiritual leader attempted to put the spirits to rest, but was unable to do so and nearly lost his life in the attempt. They called me, and I mean to attempt to settle the spirits here. I nodded. Makes sense. How can I help? Your shield work has always been impressive. I would like you to raise a shield around us so I can complete the ritual. Think you can manage that? I told him I could, and as we rolled along to God knows where, I found my eyes getting heavy. You would have said that would be impossible to sleep with such a task ahead of us, but I was soon snoring softly in the passenger seat. My lack of sleep had caught up with me, and when Nat shook me awake some time later, I saw it was nearer to dusk. There was a red mark on the side of my head where I'd been leaning against the glass, and as I shook the weariness from my body, he pressed a cup of coffee into my hand. I stopped about an hour ago at this little post on the way. You never stirred, but I figured you'd like a little mud in you before we get to work. I thanked him, and as I drank the coffee, I surveyed the site. It looked like a construction site more than a burial mound, but I could see a tent near the base, complete with some tables that had been laid with bones for assembly. There were some black bags nearby, too, presumably for transporting the bodies, and someone had driven a tractor up beside the mound. 
so they could get some of the dirt out of the way. The land around the mound was barren, but I could feel something here that was anything but dead. The air here practically thrummed with energy, and Nat grabbed his bag and walking stick before stumping out of the truck. We set up near the base of the mound, drawing a circle as we set out the herbs and implements we would need for the ritual. Nat had brought cleansing herbs, stones I knew would be important for soothing bad energy, and a variety of things that would call to the spirits and draw them to the spot. It was clear that Nat had done this kind of thing before, and as I made the proper markings and set my wards to the task, I felt like an animal in the zoo. Things were watching us, things that did not like us. They were curious at the time, but it was a curiosity that wouldn't last once we got started. This is going to be the biggest shield you've ever thrown up, Nat told me, fixing himself Indian style on the ground. And it has to be perfect. I need time to build up the energy for this, and if they get their hands on us, they will hurt us. Understand? I nodded, but I hoped I was capable. We'd been practicing my shield work for most of the time with Nat, and I was pretty good. Nat would throw things at me, sometimes rocks and sometimes snow, but never to injure, and I would bring my energy to bear so I could stop it. If I had some time to prep, I could usually focus my runes or sigils and get some extra protection, and this was one time I believed I would need it. Good. Let's get started then. It'll be dark soon, and I want to be back on the road when it is. He lit the herbs and spread out the implements, and when he began speaking the old words, words that sounded so familiar to my grandmother's world sometimes, I focused my energy and got my shield right. That was when I started to really feel like someone was watching, like I was an animal in the zoo or a fish in a tank at a fancy restaurant. The things that swarmed around us were far from pleasant. Natives with cuts and holes in them, women with blood in their hair, and even bloody children with their necks bent or their bodies crumpled. They were difficult to look at, but I knew they were nothing so much as an accusation against the people who had done this to them. They existed to pass judgment on a system that had failed them, had even decided that in their otherness they should be killed, and that was the worst part of all. I looked back to Nat, but if he saw them, he never said. His eyes were closed, his lips almost singing as he wove the old magic, and as they got closer to us, I wondered if I would be up for the task. When the first one hit the barrier, it felt like someone had lashed me with a switch. It was sudden, so sudden that I nearly lost my concentration. But I straightened as the second and third pressed their bony fingers against the surface. The pain was immense and so different than the snowballs or rocks I had deflected. This was cold and it was bristly and it felt like frostbite the longer it stayed in contact with me. I gripped my teeth and tried to focus, but I'd been unprepared for anything like this. It was the worst pain, well, the second worst pain in my life, and I'll never forget it. I went to my knees, still holding the shaky barrier, and when I heard Nat's chanting rise in volume, I felt a new surge of power build behind me. Nat's power was different when it cascaded over you, like warm sun and gentle breeze, and as it rocketed forth and through my barrier, I saw the haggard ghost people take a step back, and then another. They left us, disappearing into the mound, and as I panted like a spent dog, 
I felt Nat pat my shoulder. I looked up to find him smiling. Not bad, kid. Not bad at all. We drove home then, not saying much, and I was asleep before the mound was out of sight. They said that Nat put me to bed and told all of his kin not to bother me until I was ready to get up. He called Wayne, and too, and told him that I was off for a couple of days and not to come over to John's and try to roust me for some delivery. The boy has helped the tribe, and he's more than earned a rest. I slept for three days, waking up feeling refreshed, but the memory of those poor souls was not something I could sleep off like the sore muscles or the aching joints. I sat speechless as Grandpa finished the story. The weather rumbled and boomed outside, but I was thinking more about lost souls and the angry dead. Sounds like quite a time. Grandpa nodded. It was a very instructive time. I went out with Nat a few more times, but it was never quite that intense. We tracked down some missing children and helped a family get a presence out of their house. But by this point, my time in Alaska was growing short. He got up then, putting his cup in the sink and heading for bed. Sometimes, I thought, it seemed that the stories were all that kept him going. But sometimes, it seemed like they were slowly killing him, too. What do you mean? I asked. Well, clearly I came back here to settle down. And that time would come sooner than I thought. You're still here. Thanks so much for joining us for tonight's spooky tale. If you'd like a little bit more spooky in your life, why not click on one of the videos that appears at the end of our story? Or maybe head on over to one of our playlists where you can get your fill of spooky content. If you like your spooky a little more tactile, I've got a new book that's come out. If you'd like your own copy, there's a link below in the description where you can get your own copy of my spooky book. If you like what you see here on the channel and think you might like to support in a more monetized way, then why not come over to Patreon or become a member on YouTube? Speaking of, let's go ahead and thank our members now. Thanks to Siv Garstead, Unicorn Hollow, and Heather for being our spooky ghost contributors. Thanks to Janet, Lee Kendall, Psycat, Rhonda J, Sue Casper, and Valinator for being our spooky skeleton tier contributors. And thanks to Hi Stacy, Winter, Zeronin, Stephanie Carrington, Tyler Parker, Cinnamon Fox, and Sarah Samar42 for being our ghostly reader tier contributors. Thanks, everyone. We just couldn't do the show without you. If you too would like to support the show, we always tell you to come on down to Patreon or check out my member section on YouTube. Spooky Skeleton contributors get their video 12 hours earlier at 8.30 a.m. as opposed to 8.30 p.m. And ghostly readers get a book every time I write one on their doorstep. There's actually one coming up here in a few weeks, so if you'd like to get in on that, please go ahead and sign up. And as always, thanks for stopping by. Dr. Plague, signing off. Have a wonderful evening.